Lots of people have asked the question, are raisins nutrients? Well, I put it to the test and I want to tell you my results. So let's get started. So I really wanted to answer the question or come up with some answers for the question we all ask, which is, are raisins nutrients? It's a hot topic debate in the mead world and uh, I thought it'd be fun to test. So in front of me, I have nine gallons of mead and I'll explain exactly how I ran this test. I started with this recipe up here. It was about three quarters of a gallon of water, 2.2 pounds of orange blossom honey to remain consistent and three different yeasts. In this, these three right here, I used the Lavin K1 V116. In these three right here, I used the Mangrove Jacks yeast, which is a mead yeast. In these, I used the Lavin D47. So uh, one of them had nothing in it, had no possible extra nutrients. It just was a plain Jane mead. In another one, in the second one, I put a handful of organic raisins, which is what you see here. And um, those are the big test. Are A lot of people say that raisins are nutrients. If this is true, then these things would have assisted or would assist in a fermentation. In the third one, I put um, actual DAP, which is dimonium phosphate. It's a yeast nutrient. And I put it all in the, in the front of it. So I let each one of them go through the primary. I took a gravity reading every single two days for one of these, for each one of these. So I didn't do every day, uh, I did every two days. And I recorded my results. So um, you've probably seen a little bit on the screen there. That's kind of what my process looked like. I didn't record uh, all of the D47 or the mangrove because this process is taking me two months already. So I don't want this to be too long of a video. We're gonna be talking about the results now and then at the end of this video, we're gonna do a taste test to see if there's any difference between them. So let's hop into the results portion. So our results, you can see on the screen right now, um, here are, I did it in two ways. I did it as a chart like this. So here's the Lauvin K1 V1116. You can see that on day zero, they all started at 1.082. Then at day two, we have this breakdown, uh, 1.080 for the nothing, 1.080 for the raisins, yeast nutrient. Anyways, I'll let you dissect that down. By the way, these charts will be in the description in a Google Drive if you wanna check them out for uh, reference. You can notice on the Lauvin K1 that the raisins specifically, as they're going down, started to kind of outpace the nothing version. So you see here 1.040, day 20, 1.020. But the yeast nutrient, the DAP that I put in, finished by day 12 with the Lauvin K1 V1116. Um, now, they, this one, the, K, the raisins, I do believe um, had some effect in here. Clearly you can see by the, um, the gravity rings alone that they moved a little bit faster. This one finished in, uh, the raisins finished in 30 days, the nothing version finished in 34. So there's that. Here is the D47 version. The D47 moved much quicker in general. It's a very fast paced yeast. They all started at 1.080. And here is the chart, the yeast nutrient, regular DAP version finished by day eight, the raisin finished by day 20, and the D47, or sorry, the nothing version finished by day 22. That one is much closer. Um, I didn't see, the raisins didn't really do as much in that case, so there's that one. And the third version I did was the mangrove, and you can see here, they started at 1.080 each. The uh, yeast nutrient DAP version finished at or finished by day eight, the, um, or both of these actually, the nothing and the raisins were about the same. So that's one way I've done this. Let me go ahead and show you um, a more visual way to see this. Here's a chart of the K1V1. You can see based on this line chart, um, line graph, excuse me, that the, um, the blue line, which is the store-bought nutrient DAP that we used just flew by really fast and the, no, the raisins was a little bit faster, and then of course the no nutrients. So that is the K1V1 in chart form, in line graph form. 
Here is the D47, which is uh, very similar in some ways. The store-bought nutrient flew through by day eight. Um, the nothing in the raisins were very, very close. You can see that their lines um, are very, very similar. And again, the charts are all down in the description if you want to see that, because I know that this part might be, might be a little bit um, fast moving for you. But this is uh, the D47. And the mangrove jack, which is this one right here, blue line, store-bought nutrient, went or was finished by day eight, and then the nothing and the raisins version were very, very close. And I, again, I try to keep it as, as uh, clear as I can. These line charts or line graph, like it got rid of the last number there, so like it's a little bit confusing. Now here's the thing, some of you are saying, well, well, I know that raisins are not as strong of a nutrient, but they're still nutrients. I can say honestly, by this data, that raisins add a little bit of nutri nutritional value for yeast because they do have some sugars in them, they do have some complexity in general that allows the yeast to feed on. However, they are not nearly as effective as store-bought yeast nutrient. Now before some of you say, well, I don't wanna put anything that's a white powder in, I understand that. Putting something in that is not necessarily, quote, natural can be a little bit sketchy. And just because it moved fast, faster does not mean that it is a better mead. So I want to make that clear. This was simply testing our raisins nutrients. And the answer so far is yes, kind of. And I put the kind of on there because it, they are such a minuscule amount that in order to get a true full value of nutrition for your yeast, um, you would have to put a ton of them in. And it's not worth it at that point. I think whenever I do my taste test, which you're gonna see in just a moment, that you're gonna find, or will find that the raisins probably added some flavor as well as a little bit of nutritional value. So um, that is, that's all my data that I did. I did it three times. Now I could have done it, I'm sure 25 more times, but this video has taken me two months already to make and I don't wanna spend um, all year doing it. You're welcome to take and do this test yourself. I think if you wanna see uh, the results for yourself, you can try it. But now we're gonna go ahead and take and do a taste test. And I'm inviting a friend to come and help me do this because I don't wanna do this alone. We're gonna do this in a blind fashion and you're about to see what we do. All right, here we are with the tasting. I've got some help today. This is BC from Doing The Most, um, somebody we've collaborated quite a bit. So you can find him um, at Doing The Most on YouTube or down in the description. I'll put a link to his stuff. He does a lot of mead stuff, so I'm very uh, trusting in his opinion in this case. It's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the big taste uh, test portion. We just talked about all of the results of gravity and how long and all that. But I think the, the taste testing portion is a important factor. Yeah, it's crucial. It is. So what's happening here is we both have three glasses. And we're going to do this with the mangrove, the K1V1, and the D47. And um, I've got some help. My friend Chris, Chris is going to help us with the handling portion so we don't know what's what. But on the bottom of all these glasses is the yeast name and if it's a nutrient and nothing or raisin we're going to taste test them each one and then pick which one we like more kind of talk about the differences and then at the end of that you'll know which one we picked individually or you know together as the, the favorite maybe we'll have a consensus so this is the mangrove jacks uh, mo5 and this one's a mead yeast i don't know if you've ever used it before i used it once and this I is, didn't feel like it contributed anything of note in the brew that I mm -hmm. used it in, but it was just a traditional. It's it's the very hefty. It's like a EC one 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 eight. It's very strong. It's up to eighteen fast fermenter. So we'll see if it retained any honey character. I don't know. Okay. So there's no way to know exactly. Let's just taste test. We'll talk about it. Let's do it. Here we go. Okay. You pick one. We'll go for it. And we're gonna not look and see. Right. Yeah, there definitely is. This this one, whatever mine, whatever this one is right here, is definitely clear. Yeah, it's 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 pretty identifiable looking across the table. I don't know. <laughs> I I have spent a lot of time with these, but I don't know what is what exactly. I don't know if I did not look at the clarity side. I feel like they're tasting very similar. There's like a m minuscule difference. I feel like these two of mine, which appear to have the lighter colors taste real similar to each other. Yeah. Now, how old are these? These are 
month and each one's a little different. The youngest one is the mangrove. Okay. So, okay. Well, interesting. Okay. So for me, the one that's more clear mm -hmm. is more mellow. It feels like it's, it's melded the flavors a little bit more. Um, it's not as bright. I think that's part of it, which is interesting to me. The two that are less clear feel more bright. Mm -hmm. I feel like the darkest one is sweeter. Yeah. There's a, there's a thicker finish and a sweeter finish on that. That Ooh, yeah. I could see some folks preferring. Mm -hmm. This one definitely. Whatever. Because you expect a sweet finish in meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely that. It's very warm. It's nice. Mm -hmm. um, I would say if I was to pick my favorite in order, I'm going to pick whatever this one is. It's a little more mellowed out. I do like you're talking about that sweet side. This one, whatever it is. Definitely bright. This um, The other unclear one <laughs> is... Uh, I don't know. It has some weird flavor to me. So you you chose the clearest of your three samples? As I your... did. Okay. I feel like... So I felt that, for me, had a little bit of a bitter edge to it that yeah. I didn't care for. I could see that. This one has a little too... Um, both of these have a little too much bite. Like, mm -hmm. uh, almost acidic. Like, mm -hmm. not quite acidic, but that same feeling you get. No, I'm gonna keep it. Okay, so this one for me tastes like tastes like real young like country fruit wine like a welch's grape juice uh -huh. kind of wine it's got those i don't like really any of the flavors in the darkest one here okay um i think either of these are particularly if they were back sweetened would end up just just great but oh are we ranking them yeah so i'm going one okay. two three so I, I felt like this one was the most offensive. I felt like this one, like I could finish this Okay, off. so what is that one for you? This is number I'm, one, this is the one. I'm looking at the bottom? Yeah, you can look at the bottom. This okay. is the one we like the most. Interesting, Mine, so the nutrient version is the most clear, which makes sense because it fermented the fastest. Uh-huh. Um, so it probably had time to clear. So I preferred the one without nutrient. I think it, okay. So I normally, and I said this in my last little portion before this whole taste test, I said uh -huh. just because it ferments fast doesn't mean it's a better mead. And I think that's true. There is a part of this one, the nutrient version, because it fermented so fast, I believe some of those characters might have blown off mm -hmm. a little bit. This uh, It's a double-sided sword because some, uh, some of the flavors were blown off, but it's had a little more time to age, so to speak, yeah, since yeah. it finished a week and a half before two and weeks before i think the bitterness that i'm probably sensing in this is is bitterness from the honey yeah it, it is definitely that like floral edge mm -hmm. and again with back sweetening it would be just fine yeah but we're i definitely think, obviously having yeah. these dry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for sure <laughs> they all ended at uh 1.000 they started about 1080 okay so uh what was your second pick my, my second, second pick, pick go ahead raisin Oh, my you second the nutrient. was the nutrient. Yeah. And then my last one was My the third raisin. was the nothing. Yeah, raisin. Okay. Oh, interesting. All right, so okay. I preferred the nutrient version. BC preferred the no, nothing no version, nutrients. which is totally fine. I mean, save you money right there. All right, <laughs> we're, we're going to switch to uh, to the D47 now, so give us one second. All right, here is the Lauvin D47 version. Exact same process. Let's go ahead and start taste testing. Wildly it's the same, different. same recipe, by the way. Same honey? Same honey, same recipe down to the dot. Almost I like the same this gravity. one a lot. <laughs> I might just... Yeah, just <laughs> preemptively. Done. <laughs> Interesting. These are so different. They are. Like, whatever this one is, very flat. It's very... Not very um, floral. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting. They they seem to each represent different ends of the meat. Spectrum. Yeah, <laughs> you just sort of combine them together. It's like it's it's almost more of do I, yeah, which which part of the mead spectrum do I, do I want to play in? This one clear one finished sweeter than the other, or yeah, it it tastes sweeter yeah. than the other. Perceived that perceived yes. sweetness side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm flipping. I'm doing this. All right, so that's interesting. Okay, we've, I don't know, let's see if we agreed. Okay. In first place is 
In my opinion, the nothing. Same. Hey, okay. All right. Well, so let's let's talk about this one real fast because okay. I do think it's interesting. You're talking about how I'm sure we'll get to this one in a moment, but it has more perceived sweetness. Mm -hmm. I think because maybe the 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 Lavin D47. Um, you've had more experience. With, no, I think we both had probably. A, decent amount of experience probably it doesn't really need a lot of nutrient from mm -hmm. what i've experienced in general no. so it's pretty aggressive this has a little bit of that perceived sweetness which i like it also feels smoother and rounder yeah there's not as much of that jaggedy kind of that heat that yeah hot alcohol burn to it which i mean no nutrients so that's I what know. i was getting from this one but my second place um, so what was your second place? Mine was the raisins, which is nutrient. Nutrient. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, my problem with the nutrient version, I just feel like it's, it's very, it's so mellow. Like you get honey. It's just not very, it's it, watery almost. Yeah. It's flabby and it's dark. Like it's weird to me. This is so mm -hmm. bright. This is super dark. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I didn't like it as much, but that's not to say it's bad necessarily. No, this one I would I would want to hit this with some acid or tannin or something. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like this one ended with more of a robust yeah. flavor and mouthfeel. So I guess we your last one would be raisin. Neither like the raisins. Yeah. I mean, it just it's better than in my opinion than the nutrient, okay. but um, the raisins definitely added some body to this. Mm -hmm. Even though I only put a handful in, I think it was enough to really give it some kind of umph, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, it kind of tastes raisiny. Yeah. It's got a, a kind of like a date or raisin mm -hmm. kind of sugar. I don't want to say sugary, but it's, it's, it's definitely got, got a perceptible sweetness like this one does, but it's got a dry fruit thing that yeah. is not really sitting well I with could, me. I could see that. Yeah, I definitely, I think the difference what made it go to second place for me is that it did have a little bit of brightness that opened up my palette a little more than this one. This was super dark. Not to say it, yeah. it can't be brighter with some back sweetening. But. I will say it's more complex than the one that had nutrient mm -hmm. in it, but the complexities that are there I don't like as much yeah, that's as fair. the more neutral flavor profile of this one. Yeah. Okay, well... There's that. So we both preferred the nothing, no nutrient version. I think that's... I think I'm two for two on that now. Yeah. Well, let's see if you go three for three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And here's the K1V1116. So let's go ahead and do some tasting. The first taste was really smooth. Mm -hmm. The florals yeah. are coming strong through that one too. This is, is uh, orange blossom honey, I should mention. I think, I don't know if I mentioned that before. Mm. 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 Mm -mm. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> Whatever that. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think we both had the that same one at the same on time. That one. It started okay, mm -hmm. and then I tasted it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the nose and was like, all right. Mm. Okay, that okay. one. I gotta say, I'm not a huge fan of any of these. Yeah, I mean, I think the problem with the K1 is it is, it's like a champagne yeast. It's mm. not a champagne yeast, but it's like one that it just burns through stuff. And so you lose so much of that important honey aroma, which then, you know, translates to flavor. Okay. I'm curious what equates for that. Like where that sourness is coming from. I don't know. We're gonna, I bet if I was a gambling person that it's probably the nutrients just blowing through everything. Mm hmm. Maybe. So I don't dislike the sourness. Again, if it was balanced by some sweetness, yeah. then it would round that out. <laughs> All right, I'm committed. You committed? Locked in? <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, let's do this. Let's go to number three first on this one. Okay. Why not? Let's mix it up. Worst one. I, when was the raisin? Was Nothing. The, so, surprisingly, I thought the raisin was going to be one of the less clear ones, but... Oh, you weren't three I, for three. <laughs> I wasn't three for three. Oh, it's okay. Womp womp. Um, um, yeah. I don't... I just... I, I didn't like the... Ooh, I can now... I mean, now that I know this is raisins, I can get more of that... Um, 
you know, grapey plum. Mm -hmm. It tastes kind of a little plummy to me. I don't know. There, so you didn't like the nothing one? No, there's just, there's a, there's a, like a raspiness to the flavor. Yeah. Like, it's fine. It's going down is fine. The exhale is okay. And then there's that, like, swallow and exhale again. And that's where it that's just where it fills your mouth with funk. Yeah. That's true. What that's was your second one? Second choice was raisin. Mine was nothing. So that, oh, that means that, in this case, number one, for me was nutrient. Same. Okay. Huh. That's interesting. <laughs> The raisin one, it just has that like sour, offensive kind of flavor that yeah. I didn't like. This one is, I feel like, neutral. Yeah, it's in not, a way this that, is not super impressive to me by any means, but... Right, right. Not, again, going back, yeah, I don't yeah, really yeah. care for any of these yeah. uh, in this round. But this is the, the least worst. Yeah, no, I think that... Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> this, is, this is what the test is about. Science. So... Um, we can kind of talk about this for a second. Yeah. Raisins, we, we both have messed with raisins and realized and used them in, in context. And um, I, I don't think you've seen my graphs or anything. But essentially, raisins moved about the same speed as nothing. Okay. At least in the case of the mangrove and the D47. Okay. And the K1V1, which is what I started with, there was a, a kind of gap by the end. But the nutrient version finished within eight days on all of them. Now, that's not to say that nutrients are the end-all, be-all, but you have to do Absolutely. it for everything. Because clearly, you know, you liked the na the nothing version more. It's true. Um, and I think one of them, I can't remember now, one of them I liked the nothing more as well. So, you can use raisins in your brew. In fact, I don't want to discourage you from doing that. In fact, I think a lot of people, uh, I realized how lucky we are that we have nutrients to choose yeah. from. Because I was reading some comments the other day, and some people said, like, oh, I can't get a hold of these nutrients. Like, okay, then... You can use raisins. Ra raisins can add a little bit, but here's the cautionary thing. Raisins add flavor. Raisins are not just a nutrient. Yeah. Anything you put into a brew adds flavor. Yeah. So. And I've, I've used raisins variously on the channel as well. I used them most recently in a dandelion mead, mm -hmm. and it's because dandelion petals are not gonna contribute any body or really any mouthfeel. So yeah. I used raisins as a way to bulk up, heft up that mead. Mm -hmm. But I also used a Tosno nutrient schedule. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So, and they do add tannic value. They do add body. So you can use them for that effect. But this whole, the whole purpose of this test, I think hopefully you've seen, is that raisins are not a strong nutrient. Do not depend on them to bolster or, you know, make your brew move faster. Will they help a little bit? Yeah, but it's like not enough to really make a huge difference. So... I mean, so do you consider this exhaustive or are you going to dive back into raisins as new? This is as far as I'm going with this <laughs> test. If you want to run your similar tests, you're welcome to go ahead and do this yourself in whatever fashion. But um, I, I feel in my heart, this is decently conclusive, yeah. not completely conclusive, but decently enough for me to say I will not be using raisins as a prominent nutrient in my brews. And I don't know about you. Leave a comment down below. Um, I want to say thanks to BC for coming on. You should go check out his channel, Doing the Most. They do a lot of really cool mead-related things. They do a lot of crazy ones like me. I've got a peppermint mead. He's got a, um, a Cheeto mead. We all just do <laughs> crazy stuff in general. So um, just, you know, leave lots of likes and share our stuff, and uh, we'll keep rocking. So thanks for uh, watching this video. Leave your comments down below. Love to hear what you have to say about this, and have a great day. Thanks, BC. Happy brewing.